Okay, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity to share our data. Uh, we earlier today had a nice review on the elements of universal responses for a flu vaccine, and I'd like to suggest they're all present in M2SR and show you the data for it. The use of an M2 knockout was first described in the laboratory of Dr. Yoshi Kawoka, where the um, M2 gene was deleted, so the virus does not express a functional M2 protein. As you know, the M2 protein is an ion channel protein that's necessary for, oops, sorry. The M2 protein is an ion channel um, protein that's necessary for initial infection. So the M2SR virus derives a functional M2 in the membrane from its complementing cell line, but the genome, the M1 segment, does not encode for a new M2 gene. So what this results in is an M2SR vaccine that's a single replication virus that's capable of entering the cell like a live normal virus, express all the viral proteins except M2, and trick the body into making a robust immune response. However, it does not produce progeny virus and therefore is not a shedding virus. The M2SR elicits broad immune responses, it's given intranasally, the natural route of flu infection, so it induces mucosal immunity. And because it's capable of undergoing a full infection cycle, it induces the necessary innate signals to generate innate immunity, leading into the adaptive responses, antibody responses to all flu antigens, not just HA, and cell-mediated immunity to all the flu antigens that are expressed in the cell. And because there's no new M2 expressed, it doesn't result in infectious progeny. We've shown that these results provide broad universal protection against multiple subtypes in um, mice and ferrets. For example, the H1N1 M2SR vaccine has protected against the homologous H1N1 virus, totally unrelated H3N2, and the highly lethal H5N1 virus, which was a study sponsored by the NIAID. I'd like to show responses from these studies to, to um, demonstrate the universal elements. First, I'd like to talk about the M2SR H5N1 vaccine study in mice. Mice were vaccinated with 10 of the six particles of the homologous H5N1 M2SR in a prime boost regimen, a prime only regimen, and a heterologous H1N1 pandemic, the 2009 virus M2SR in a prime boost regimen, all of the M2SR given intranasally and as a control and IM recombinant H5HA protein in, in a prime boost regimen. These vaccinated mice were challenged 20 weeks later with 20 MLD50 of the highly lethal A Vietnam 1203-2004 virus. So the all the M2SR vaccinated mice, both the single prime only H5N1 and the prime boost H5N1, as well as the cross protective H1N1 pandemic M2SR groups, survived challenged. Whereas naive succumbed to challenge, and the recombinant H5HA protein protected 40% of the vaccinated mice. When you look at the Tissues from the challenged uh, mice, you see that the both single and two-dose H5N1 M2SR groups 
None of them had any tissue from any of the respiratory or the systemic organs. The cross-protective H1N1 M2SR only had um, virus in the lungs of two of the three animals that were tested, none in the systemic organs, whereas the recombinant H5H8 could not control the virus and had a systemic infection, and the naive had a systemic infection throughout. When you look at the antibody responses generated by the M2SR vaccines, you see that there's, um, these are ELISA titers against recombinant H5H8. You see that the, there is um, both serum IgG and IgA, as well as local lung wash IgG and IgA in all the um, H5N1 M2SR vaccinated groups. The H5H8 mainly induced high uh, HA responses in syrup, and the H1N1 M2SR also had cross-reactive antibodies detected by ELISA against the recombinant H5HA. When you look at neutralizing HAI titers against H5N1, you see only the homologous groups, the H5N1 M2SR prime only and prime boost, had high HI titers against the Vietnam virus, and those survived challenged 100%. The H1N1 M2SR did not induce HI titers. It is a different subtype HA. And surprisingly, the recombinant H5HA, though, it did induce ELISA titers. It was not um, high enough to induce an HI titer. Now, these two groups that, that had ELISA titers against the H5HA had different survival outcomes. So next we want to look at what could be the difference between those two groups. And this shows a Western blot where we took the H5HA1 and HA2 and probed using the serum from the vaccinated mice. So as was reviewed earlier today, the HA2, the stem region, is the highly conserved region that's now a target for universal vaccines, and the HA1 head, the subtype specific, highly uh, variable region, is the, the HI-inducing region. So the H5N1 vaccinated M2SR recognized both the H5HA1 and the HA2 as expected, the H1N1 M2SR serum did not recognize the H5HA1 as expected, but did recognize the highly conserved HA2 region. So the H1N1 HA that's in the M2SR does induce responses against the H5HA2 region. The recombinant H5HA serum did recognize the HA1 head, but as a delivered as a protein was not able to induce responses against the HA2 region, and the mock infected animals did not have any of the responses. M2SR vaccines also generate antibodies against the neuraminidase, and this slide shows ELISA titers against the H5 neuraminidase, both the H5N1 serum and the H1N1 M2SR serum react against the H5 neuraminidase. For cell-mediated responses, we're going to look at the H3N2 challenged virus. You can appreciate the um, difficulty in doing uh, the cell-mediated responses in the BSL-3. So in this study, the mice were vaccinated with H1N1 M2SR vaccine and then challenged with the totally unrelated H3N2 virus. So neither the, the HAs come from different lineages and the neuraminidase are totally different in this um, cross-protection challenge. All the mice survived that were vaccinated with the um, H1N2 SR. And when you look at the flu-specific T cell responses on day four and seven from, from these um, challenged mice, you see peptide-specific responses generated both CD8 and CD4 responses in the lung wash against um, internal proteins, the nuclear protein, 
as well as the PB1 and a, a CD4 HA epitope. And these responses are similar to a sublethal dose of a wild type virus. And as you know, these um, highly conserved antigens, shown here as the matrix protein, are conserved um, between, between different subtypes as well as chronological viruses. Here we still see an alignment between the M2SR M gene, which is a PR8 M gene, and the recent H7N9 2013 M gene, and highlighted are the T cell epitopes uh, CD8 epitopes, human epitopes that are 100% identical between these divergent viruses. When you look at the cell subtype the, the, of the T cells here, they are of the effector and effector memory phenotype, both CD8 and CD4, similar to the wild type um, responses. And this Phenotype of T cells was shown in the recent 2009 pandemic to protect against the 2009 induced disease. So having the effector phenotype does protect and reduce disease symptoms. So we next wanted to test this in the ferret system and this study was sponsored by NIAID and conducted in Ted Ross's lab. And we vaccinated ferrets with 10 of the seventh um, particles of, of the M2SR vaccine. Again, a prime and boost group, prime only. And then this time we had both the prime only and prime boost group for the cross protective, the heterologous group H1N1 M2SR. And they were primed at day zero, boosted at day 28, and challenged eight weeks later, again with the lethal dose of the Vietnam 1203. Again, HAI titers were only induced by the homologous M2SR, the H5 M2SR, so that's the light green and the dark green, and not by the H1N1 M2SR group. And when you look at the survival curve, first for the H5N1 M2SR, the prime and boost group protected 100%, but a single dose, the prime only group, protected two thirds of the animal, whereas the mock animal succumbed to infection. And when you look at the, the heterologous group challenged by Vietnam 1203, the H1N1 M2SR prime boost group protected 100% of the animals, and the single dose H1N1 M2SR also protected two thirds of the animals. The clinical scores of the ferrets reflect the, the protection scores in that the um, prime and Bruce group in orange and red for H1 and H5 did not have any clinical scores in the ferrets. The single dose homologous in black had minor um, minimal clinical scores, whereas the heterologous group had early um, clinical scores and then cleared and controlled the disease. When you look at the histopath scores, which also reflect the viral um, titers from the respiratory organs and the brain, you see that none of the M2SR vaccinated groups had any virus in the brain. The prime boost groups, both the, the H5N1 and the H1N1, had no virus recovered or any histopath scores in the respiratory tissues or the brain, and the single dose prime only homologous um, group had lung, minimal lung uh, virus and histopath score, and the, um, the heterologous group had um, minor histopath and, and um, histopath and virus titers in the respiratory organs. So as was um, discussed earlier today, there is a live vaccine on the market. So M2SR is a live vaccine. And we did want to compare it to Flumist. Flumist is highly efficacious in children, but not in adults where there are pre-existing immunity. So in the next studies, I'd like to compare um, to Flumist and also suggest the mechanism on how we may differ. 
So we had the um, H1N1 2009 HANA in the M2SR backbone and in the Flumis backbone, which is a cold adapted virus, and gave equivalent doses per mouse. And then on uh, day three after vaccination, we looked at virus, vaccine virus, in the lung and in the nasal turbinates. The M2SR virus is a single replication, non-shedding virus, so no virus was recovered in any of the um, lungs or nasal turbinates. The flu mist did, have, did grow both in lung and nasal turbinates, and as a control, we had the wild type California that um, did grow, and those animals did succumb to the infection. When we look at the antibody kinetics generated by M2SR in contrast to Flumis, we see that the kinetics of M2SR shown here in ELISA against recombinant HA from day seven to day 28 are much faster for M2SR. So at day seven, you already have a difference in, in the ELISA titer between M2SR and Flumis, and then by the end of 28 days, they're to the same magnitude. When you look at the T cell responses after challenge, both um, M2SR and Flumis prime T cell responses in the lymph nodes and in the lung wash to similar um, levels. So M2SR is able to induce similar responses with a single replication to flumus that has continuous replication. And when you do the challenge, a heterologous challenge with a lethal dose of Aichi, so the vaccines, if you'll recall, are HA and NA of the California 2009, and we have a dose titration from 10 to the 6 down to 10 to the 5, M2SR shown in blue and flu mist in red, you see that head-to-head -head M2SR does do better as you titrate the do dose and protect against uh, H3N2, a heterologous challenge. So we wanted to investigate the in vitro mechanism of what the differences could be between Flumis and M2SR, and we first looked at, at the um, growth kinetics between, between M2SR and Flumis, and here you see that in the initial day one of the growth curve, you already have a two log difference between M2SR and Flumis, Flu, uh, M2SR replicates similar to wild type. Flumis is, is cold adapted, replicates slower, and it's this initial uh, difference at 24 hours that we were more interested in and looked at more in <coughs> human A549 cells, looking at NP expression in the first 24 hours, and you see, again, this is a flow analysis that M2SR behaves like wild-type flu and generates more protein in the first 24 hours than Flumis. So as you can imagine, this um, does provide more antigen and influence the downstream um, uh, immunity, and we think this may overcome the pre-existing immunity that adults have. So we, we tested that quickly in some of our surviving mice that already had um, H1N1 experience, H, H3N2 IG experience. We detected the antibody level before we immunized again with the closely related BRIS 2007 H3N2 and then looked for antibody responses against the new um, M2SR, and here you can see that the M2SR did induce fourfold new HA responses against the new an antibody, new antigen, um, given the, the prior experience. So we then looked also to show that it's the T cells, T cell responses are also boosted in um, mice with prior experience. You can see that those that had IG as well as M2SR vaccination had higher T cell levels than just a, a um, virus infection or just a vaccination. So the virus isn't inhibited by pre-existing immunity. 
So in summary, we've shown that um, we have universal cross protection against multiple subtype, and we have different responses, T cell responses, stem responses, antibody responses to multiple antigens, as well as mucosal responses, and we are going into the clinic at the end of next year. I'd like to acknowledge our collaborators and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. I think we'll have one question and then we can have the rest during coffee. Nick? So, two quick questions. Well, only one. <laughs> quite sure how that applies to this and, and how you'd make a seasonal vaccine if you can't have a, a influenza B component. And secondly, what's the risk of recombination with wild type so that you get restoration of M2 if you're making a pandemic vaccine with it? I would have thought um, that would be very dangerous. So influenza B uh, does express an M2, BM2, so we are working on a BM2 version, so it will be a full seasonal vaccine. And addressing the, the reassortment issue, the single replication non-shedding phenotype does greatly reduce that. That is a theoretical risk, and I think yesterday it was presented that in 20 years that there hasn't been any recording of that. But when we do say re the potential for reassortment, we do mean shedding viruses that can co-infect the same cell. So if you don't have a shedding virus, and M2SR is not, um, it, it's highly unlikely that you're going to have vaccination and someone sneezing on you at the same time because it is a low MOI, the nasal respiratory in infection. Good. Well, thank you very much. I'm afraid I have to...